I'm Machen McDonald, one of your co-leaders, and Corian. He's investigating. Okay. And we also have Susie Daggett, off to my right, who's one of our co-leaders as well. Um, how many people here are for the here for the first time? Any first timers? Definitely. Okay, a few. Nice. Okay. Um, basically, what this organization is about is just learning tips, tricks, strategies, tools, things that can help you grow your business online. And so that's a wide spectrum. It can cover things from how to do email marketing or how not to do email marketing, um, social media, the building of websites, the optimization of websites, getting more traffic, and um, some online strategies other than that that we're going to have our guest speaker, which I'll have Corey on introduce. You're in for a treat. We've had Dave speak here uh, last year, once before. Really well received. A lot of great information. Um, he's one of those guys that actually is growing a business, is doing very well at it. So it's not like you're hearing from somebody who's just talking theory. You're talking. You're going to hear from somebody that's very practical in their information. So if you've got something to write with, you're going to want to take a lot of notes. Um, we're also blessed to have Cheryl Noble of okay. Noble yeah. One Productions, <laughs> who will be video <laughs> recording it, and then we put that video recording up onto our website so that if you need to go back and hear it over and over and over again, or if you miss something and want to get it, you'll have a place to do that. We do that with all of our workshops here, um, and one of the best things about the workshop is it's free. Okay. And, and can I say something? I no. ran into some yes I can. Okay, go ahead. I ran into someone the other day and, and she said, Oh God, I just love what you guys do at NCO. I didn't even know she paid attention. She said, I watch every single she never comes to a meeting, but she watches every single uh, month. Thank you, Cheryl. Because it's it's va it's incredibly valuable what we are bringing, not we, me, but what all of us are bringing to the uh, um, to the world. It's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, it's good content. Good content. And uh, even though it's free, we do um, ask for donations. We'll be passing around a donation jar, and the purpose of that is just so that we can offset some of the expenses that go along with this program like renting the room and we do a holiday party and things of that nature and we might even be moving to a different location to accommodate more people showing up because we are kind of at that tipping point and with that will come the need for projectors and things of that nature so you know we're not a for-profit it's just kind of an informal situation but uh, it's all with integrity and heart and we're here to support you and bring the best that we can so we're at that time of the workshop or of the meeting where we like to go around the room and find out from you guys, the members, what you've put into practice, what you've tried, what's working for you, what you're getting traction with with regards to your online marketing and growing your business on the web. So anybody have a story that they'd like to share? Or a question. <laughs> I know there's this some is the, rain, the rain that's going to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good news. Okay. But it's news. Okay. Okay. Um, the person that was doing my helping me with my website, um, it was there was a discrepancy, and it's a long story, but she she crashed it. She took it apart and put it back to where I was originally, and so I'm really. Uh, frustrated right now, uh, trying to learn how to put it back together, and um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, the good news is I've been getting a lot of publicity and you know and everything, but now I'm really stuck. <laughs> and and she, and she took three hundred dollars and wouldn't give it back to me. Um, well, there's there's a little bit of an opportunity here on our website, not the Meetup website, but on the NCO website. There is a listing of professionals. Okay. And you can go through there and you can find actual real people that might be sitting next to you mm -hmm. who um, know how to do this with um, maybe a bit more integrity. So work with local people. I find I had some issues with well, my website. Local person. I'm too. so sorry to hear that. I had some issues with my website too, and my my service provider is local. My web gal is local, and so in like eight minutes, things that were very bad and very bulky got fixed. 
but you have to find the right mix, and I suggest you look at that. Uh, okay, I will take that. Thank you. Yeah, that might even be the topic of a, of a meeting, you know, how to find the right person. It is very hard. Yeah. It is very, very, very hard, because people present themselves one way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And a big part of it, too, is, and this isn't, I'm not projecting anything, but a lot of times it's just, do we, as the consumer, have clarity of what we really want as an end product and are we communicating that appropriately? Because I know that's been problem. sometimes my issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that I deal with that a lot. And it's something that I advise companies to do a process called wireframing. It's like doing a blueprint for your house when you're designing a website to step back and do a simpler version. I'm using a website now <coughs> called mockups, M-O-Q-U-P-S, Dot com that's built for that. It's got a free trial that allows you to have two projects in there, which, by the way, for most small businesses is plenty. Um, <clears throat> and then there, work toward storyboarding and actually having a graphic design behind your website before you go to the point where you're writing copy and trying to build it on the fly. It's really tough. It's like remodeling your kitchen mm -hmm. and then halfway through it, something changes. Mm -hmm. And you're not the professional. Mm -hmm. And you rely on professionals that may not yeah. be professional. And I'm I have invested so much money into this that I'm completely broke. So it's a real strain for me to, you know, I gave her 300 she won't give it back. And I don't really have much money. So You I'm might be able to learn on your own, too. Pardon? You might be able to learn on your own. Well, I have been trying. Sitting right next to you, Marcia has been <laughs> learning on her own. I know. <laughs> uh, this is kind of improv, but how many of you, if I wanted to do like a wireframing storyboarding webinar, you guys came on, scheduled that. How many of you would be interested in that? There you okay. go. Okay. So um, do me a favor. Rachel is here too. She's my project manager for Corian.com. We'll get a sign up sheet and I, on my iPad and we'll take people's names. But we'll work out a time that'll work uh, evening or day. We'll figure something out. But uh, yeah, I can go over that with folks so that you can do some of this stuff on your own. And it's not building your website, it's planning your website and your marketing. Okay. Thank Make you. sure you ask Corian for more free stuff. <laughs> well, if there's anything free he can offer you, keep it going. <laughs> yeah, so that's what this community is about. You know, if you have a need, put it out there because it's a good chance you're not the only one that has that need or has that concern. So that's what it's about. It's sharing, it's knowing who the resources are in the room and leveraging that and thereby helping each other and growing your business so you can perpetuate your message out to your ideal clients. Who else has maybe a story or a question that they'd like to share? Well, I, I would like to ask, um, I'm, I'm trying to build my Facebook uh, likes, so everybody, please go like SeekersCentral.com, right yes, now, go like it. Be my friends, I'm getting close to a thousand, I want to get over that hump. Yes. But um, there are so many tricks in Facebook to learn how to ask people to like. There are many, 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 many ways, and maybe we need to have a little something on that too, because I keep stumbling my way through, and then people say you've asked me three times. So. <laughs> We're going to talk about one of those. Thank you. Thank All you right, never mind. Taken care. No, that's perfect. That's, that's any good. other success stories? What's something that you feel like? Yeah, it went pretty well. You put something in place. Yeah, yeah. I I started uh, about a month ago doing some um, uh, webinars, pre-recorded webinars, um, educational selling my books and CDs and first month I got about 400 about 400 downloads just posting it here and there and doing a few entries of a blog and and out of that uh, this morning I just checked I, I got 84 sales out of 400 nice. sales range between 97 and 137 nice. wow. and then there's some that's actually in the process of being upsold from there so Congratulations! First, That's first experience awesome. at it, but it's, uh, sounds like a good one. Yeah. And but but so, we might we might mention that Jim has been doing this work for um, more than two years, more than ten years, more than thirty years. Well, I'm not much on online stuff, so but you're I still there. haven't figured out the purpose of you're Facebook. There. <laughs> <laughs> so, just go, oh, I don't know what this is all about. It's a bunch of stuff. But, uh, you know, I have been doing some marketing online, but I'm, I'm not what you'd consider an expert. I've learned more here from this group than I ever knew before. But I've been marketing my stuff for a long time. So, so I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here for just a second and yeah. maybe ask Corinne. This sounds maybe like a case study that we well, can present. Well, actually, you can tell, you tell guys what's on top next of that in October. 
Yeah, well, uh, October is... It's Jim. Oh, it is Jim. Well, you're, you're doing... Uh, and this was just recently scheduled, so... Uh, but Jim, you're doing a presentation on one of your core entrepreneurial topics for that. Mm -hmm. um, the, let's talk about whether we want to bring in any of the case study stuff that you're doing for internet marketing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll right, I'm getting ready to put it out to some joint venture failing as well, so we'll see how that goes. Perfect. There are treasures in this room. Yeah. Just look around. Yeah. I'm actually doing, my name's Brenda Horton, and um, I own a software company called Action Planner. We build productivity applications to help small business owners work more effectively and more productively. And I'm actually giving a pre-recorded webinar this Friday at 12:30, and I have five backstage passes for anyone who wants to come. You're gonna, I'll be giving away some free stuff. If you're interested, let me know at the end, and I'll get your email and I'll send you the the private link to that. It's gonna be a pre-recorded webinar that's actually gonna showcase in July about to, out to about a million small business owners. So you'll get the. You'll get all the goodies inside. inside. So let nice. me know if you're interested. And what's the subject? It's on how to get out of overwhelm and get organized. Oh. It's all about being more productive and more effective in your workflow. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, if anybody would like to look at the one of the webinars, it's uh, one of them is powerofletting.go.com. Mm. Uh, so it's about 45 minutes long, all content driven, so you can see what, what I've done. Cool. Maybe we should. Uh, have a thing somewhere on one of our sites about the different these types of projects and programs with a link. You know, we could use our Facebook page for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something we have oh, all these yes, goodies for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's perfect. a perfect one. Yeah. So that's one. We'll, we'll we'll leverage it. So we'll make sure that everybody in the room has access to Jim's and Brenda's information. Um, all right, so uh, real quick, the sponsor of today's meetup is me. Um, <laughs> and I'll, when it's that time, I'll bring myself back up and I'll tell you what I'm going to promote and what the offering is. It's uh, kind of a cool offering and a cool promotion, so I think uh, you'll be pleased. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Corian to have any other announcements and also introduce our speaker for today. <laughs> Corian, come on up. Hi, everyone. I'm glad that we've got... We braved the drizzle to be here today. Uh, I'm stoked because uh, the thing that I love after a little rain like this is the hillsides will be green for a little while. Drive right? through some of the areas here, it'll be beautiful. But we're here for internet marketing. Uh, I always like to introduce uh, the group to new people here. How many people are here for the first time today? Okay, great. Uh, we bring in an internet marketing speaker once a month to talk on a variety of different topics today. David Pallavi is here as an expert and an e-commerce uh, uh, marketer to show us how he's run contests, how he's done social media marketing to grow his business. Overall, you can see from this conversation, we are working to create a collaborative environment where people bring their best selves and they're willing to share the things that they're doing specifically in business. And we have a variety of you know, I don't think there's many of us here that have businesses that are more than uh, yourself and somebody else and maybe an employee or two, but we're bringing what we're doing in the trenches. So I really encourage that environment. We'll have some time for networking at the end. Uh, now to talk more about Tahoe Mountain Sports and David. Uh, I met David when I threw him a Frisbee a little bit too far on the outside. He couldn't get up, get to it. Uh, we met on the ultimate Frisbee field in, in Truckee. And we started talking about e-commerce as we were both kind of working to build our businesses. Tahoe Mountain Sports is a retailer of a variety of mountain outdoor activity gear. It's a challenging market because you're working to sell like a Deuter backpack and there may be a hundred other businesses that sell that same Deuter backpack. <coughs> and how do you differentiate yourself? And one of the things that's been key for David in building his business is how do you build the trust and the communication, the relationship with your customers, so they know what your company is about. They see videos of what he's doing, that he sponsors events, that there's a personality within the company. And that's a place where we'll find out more, but you can then take that relationship that you've developed through social media marketing and email marketing and run a contest, and you get their friends into your business. And from there, you can use things like email marketing, which means when, isn't it true that one of the most effective things for you, OK, 
sure he'll tell us more, is that he gets a new customer, and there's a sequence of emails to teach the person about the company. And then people end up buying out of that sequence of email at a high rate, and that's why David is a very rich man. <laughs> so, uh, with no more further ado, or fluffing, here's David Pallaby. Coriands, uh, oh so nice. I, I wish um, I could say I was a rich man. I'm not a rich man. I work really hard. Um, hopefully one day we'll be a rich man, right? Just like um, we all want to be. But thank you very much for having me down here. Uh, who was here the last time I spoke? It was about a year ago. Cool. Yes. Oh, sorry. You're right. There's a hole right there. I see that. <laughs> My fault. Um, thank you very much for having me down again. Thanks to Corey and Machen and everybody else who's involved with this group. You know, you guys are really, really lucky to have a group like this. Um, incredible resource. Just hearing some of those stories was, was great and fascinating, and it's awesome that you guys all have a chance to share your stories, your successes, your failures, your redos, your whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, it's just exciting to hear and to be able to network and talk with people who are doing very similar things. So um, my business is Tahoe Mountain Sports. Last time I was here, I talked about affiliate marketing, which is um, one little stool of the marketing pole. Today I'm going to talk about primarily Facebook-related giveaways and contests and things like that. I am going to talk about one Instagram experience that we've been through. But at the end of the day, we're a small company. Um, you'll see some stats on, on what we're doing. Uh, we've been around for about, in, in our current form, about six years. Uh, we continue to grow and thrive, and really things are really all starting to come together in this world of just a million different channels and a million different media platforms and everything else. And, and we're feeling really, um, really happy because we've been putting a lot of hard work in both to our mobile channel, to our email channel, and to our social media channels. And, and they're all sort of um, singing really well together right now. So it's an exciting time for us. And I hope I can teach you a little bit of, um, about what we've learned. And, and that's really what I want to focus on today. Um, like these guys said, I, I'm a small business owner just like you. I spend my days putting out five. I go to work at 5 a.m. I get real work done from about 5 to 8 a.m. I go home to be with my daughter for an hour. And when I get back to the office, I'm pretty much running around, putting out fires, dealing with customers. Um, there's very little real work that gets done between about 10 a.m. and, and Ship when shipping ends at 4.30, and then I get a little more work done between shipping and the end of the day. But um, here's what we're going to talk about today. Um, basically, who am I? Why do you care that I'm here? Uh, <laughs> most people don't. Why, why do a contest? So I'm going to give you, um, what I'm going to start with is sort of seven steps to get you going on your own contest, if it's something that you choose to do. We'll then um, take, some step, uh, take a look back at where we've been, Tahoe Mountain Sports, and also where we're going to be going um, in the near future, and kind of how we've learned, and really, we just, everything we do is a total, a lot of them are shot in the dark, we learn from ourselves, and um, it's fun. If I could sit here and have somebody else talk to me about how to do this and skip like the six case studies and contests that we've already done, um, that'd be awesome. And if you can take some notes and figure out some things and you're that much further down the road when you hit your first one or your second one, um, you're going to be really happy that you paid attention. Has anybody in the room ever run um, a face, let's just stick with a Facebook official contest, not where you were like, hey, like my page and I'll give you a free something, like an official one using an app? Nobody. Is anybody planning on doing it in the next six months? Maybe. Oh, that's good. Okay. I mean, maybe 12 months. Anybody else? Any more people in 12 months, maybe? Depends on what it is. Okay. Depends on what it is. Good. So, um, that's great. You guys are all going to go from zero to at least something by the end of today. Um, <laughs> I might do an Instagram contest. I might do an Instagram contest. Cool. Um, we learned a lot of very important things about that. I am primarily going to focus on Facebook simply because it's the largest social network out there. Um, working with Corian, he has a client who's extremely popular on Pinterest. 
Um, there's other people who are strong on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. It seems like at the very least the main meeting point is Facebook, or at least Facebook becomes a platform for getting your word out at some point. Um, so that's really why I'm going to focus on Facebook. It's also where we are the strongest, and so we've had the, the, mo the best results, and we've had sort of the most success on Facebook. The others are a little bit more difficult to, um, to run contests and giveaways on. Um, so here's me. Here's Tom Mountain Sports. Again, we've been around for a little while. Um, we sell specialty outdoor gear, footwear, clothing, and then specialty hard goods like backpacks and camping gear in the summertime, backcountry ski gear in the wintertime. Um, like I said before, sort of our, our cross-channel traffic or omni-channel traffic or whatever um, keyword you want to use these days is really where we are seeing the most success. So we're, what we're really trying to do is take you, if you're a store customer, and turn you into an online customer. If you're an online customer, we want to see you in the store at some point. Um, and really, if you're an online customer at all, we just want to see you buying more and not just coming to us once um, for that first sale. You know, maybe you came to us once because we did have the lowest price, but we want to engage you and keep you coming back. And I think we can all agree that returning customer is always where you're actually going to make your margin and your revenue at the end of the day. A first sale might be a loss leader or you might take a hit on getting a customer, but that's okay if you can turn them into um, a long-term viable customer that continues, to come up, that continues to come back and you can invest less in as you go through their life cycle. Okay? A couple of things I do want to mention because I think this is important and as I was framing this um, to come down here for you guys, first of all, I, I thank you because what you made me do is look at all of this from a much higher level. You know, I'm in the trenches, like I said, my guy wants to run a Facebook contest, yeah, go, here's the bill, okay, whoop de doo check back in with me when you're ready or done or whatever, I got other stuff going on. Um, but really, you know, it... So this allowed me to, to take a step back and to really say, what are we doing, why are we doing it, and how are we going to keep getting better in this medium? So I, I thank you for giving me that opportunity. Direct revenue from Facebook is really, really small. Okay, these are annual numbers. That, that's peanuts. Okay, so these are direct sales coming from Facebook. This is a number that's very important because it's the number that I don't want you to focus on because that's not really what I'm going to talk about. And when we get to the end of the conversation, you're going to see where the real revenue comes in, um, and it's much more significant. I also want to let you know, and this is also non-paid um, revenue, so this is just literally somebody being on Facebook, clicking through to TahoeMountainSports.com and buying something. Okay. Um, we also spend less than $25 a week advertising on Facebook. For, so for those of you who are talking about growing your fans and the, the millions of different ad setups that you can create in Facebook and the geo-targeting and this targeting and that demographic targeting, those are all really great um, if you want to play that Facebook game. We don't really play that Facebook game other than at a very very precise local level and it's just to make sure that our surrounding community about a 30 mile radius knows we're there and knows what we have that's the only paid facebook advertising that we actually do okay i'm also going to take this entire conversation and i'm really going to scare you this is probably not going to be relevant in one year from now okay this entire presentation facebook will change something they'll change probably many things that are out completely out of everybody in this room's control so a lot of what we've learned and even going back to some of my case studies that i pulled out from 2012 um there's even some stuff you can't do anymore on facebook and you gotta jump on board with them with whatever their new product is um, and so staying on top of uh, what facebook is allowing you to do and how you can do it is also really important can I ask a question? Uh, sure. One benchmark I'm kind of intrigued in is yes. how many hours over the year are uh -huh. invested in this whole Facebook proposition for your business? Um, so, I, you know, I guess I could extrapolate out for a year. Um, and I ran across, we can, we can go online actually in a second. I, my, one of my 
team members, one of my staff members, did a blog post about his adventures um, over the past few weeks, and I'm going to get to the point, I promise. And, <laughs> and what, what he started writing about, and I didn't actually read the post until he had published it, but he had gone on and on and on and said, oh, and by the way, I'm the Facebook guy and the Twitter guy and the Instagram guy and the blog guy and the email marketing guy, and basically he's responsible for all content as it relates to Tile Mountain Sports. Um, and he said, I love my job, and this was a quote actually in the blog post, because it was sort of like an interview style blog post, and um, he goes, I love my job, and I've been able to get all of my social media, all of it, down to a half an hour a day on all channels um, for everything. And so we, we post twice a day is our general rule of thumb. It could be a photo album, you know, that takes a little more time, could be a simple text post. Um, but we, on all channels, um, on all social medias, try to spend about a half an hour a day. Um, granted, that's going to be different for everybody. It's taken us a long time to hone that strategy in and to find the right tools. We do use Hootsuite and a couple of other tools to um, manage that process. Um, but it, it's a really big part of our advertising and marketing strategy and sort of brand awareness strategy. Um, and we feel like we have a good balance right now. Um, that might change. Yeah. Are you using the root uh, program of Hootsuite, or are you paying for? Um, right whole... now, we we actually okay. are just use the free program for the for the most part. Um, it's very likely in the very near future we'll be doing their their lowest level program. Um, we've played with it. We go back and forth generally. Okay. Yes. So you're saying um, when you say you're using Hootsuite, and I'm assuming then you're saying content you're sharing on Facebook is automatically posting to Twitter, is automatically posting to other sites. That's why you're able to keep it a half an hour? Um, to, to some extent, we don't like, um, you know, part of the problem with Hootsuite or any of the programs is, you know, hashtags, at tags, blah, 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 tags. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go to Google and do some of your own research. And I should say, I'm, I'm starting this entire presentation understanding or hoping that you all have at least a rudimentary understanding of Facebook and how it works and blah blah blah. I'm not going to go into like Facebook 101 here, but because of the differences in at tags and hashtags and people's names and usernames and blah 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 blah, we actually try to hit, we, we craft a post for each channel, for each um, network individually, but we use the same content. Does that make sense? So it might be the same exact picture, but we try to change the timing. Like if we're gonna post the same picture to Instagram and to Facebook, we'll try to post that Instagram picture maybe six hours later or whatever. Um, and Pinterest, same types of things. We've learned a quick little hint. Um, Pinterest between the hours of 1 and 4 p.m. on Friday afternoon is the most popular pinning time <laughs> that Corian would like that one. We're always, we're always figuring out stupid little things like that I'm that none of us actually care about. But. So, just so I'm clear how you're using, this is just kind of a little geek about uh, this stuff. Is yes. When you're posting using the Hootsuite platform, yes. you're using the multi-platforms as well, or you're just saying, okay, I'm going to go LinkedIn here, and then I'm going to come two hours later and do Pinterest here. Are you going all at once simultaneously? Definitely not all at once, and you know, I'm going to take the ultimate in um, manager cop-outs here and tell you that I probably spend about three minutes looking at Hootsuite every week and okay. it's really my content guy who's managing okay. that platform I, I superbly you, um yeah, so fine. i'm not the hootsuite expert right. at this point yeah. um when I he do, tells I me do. he needs tools and he yeah. can prove to me that that tool is going to save me money and him time then i say you go and yeah. we move on um and that's part of the fun things about working in a small business and and having great 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 team members is just right. um trusting them to do the right thing and when they mess up then you know that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <a> new team. <laughs> moving right along. Why do why do a contest? Um, I think this is the most important thing to ask yourself. Okay, why do a contest? Do you actually have a reason to to do a contest? So Susie was standing up there. She said she wants a thousand fans. By all means, she's a prime candidate for doing a contest. You tomorrow. want to get over it tomorrow? When, whenever. <laughs> 
Um, you know, whether you want more fans, whether you want leads, whether you want more check-ins to your store, more people talking about you because there's something going on in your industry. I don't care really what it is, but if you're looking for any kind of traction, either with your existing audience or a new audience, then a contest or giveaway might be um, a good thing to check out. Okay? What are you going to get out of it? Um, it's kind of what I'm referring to as the holy grail um, down here. You are going to get sales, leads, subscriptions, etc., email addresses, whatever it may be, and whatever you set out to do, the, the, probably the best thing I can tell you is it's a very, um, it, it's not a sure bet, but if you do things right and you, and you put at least a few good pieces of the puzzle together, you will be somewhat successful with a very limited budget. And, and I think that's why contests, at least for us, have been um, a really great strategy. They've, they have low costs, they have low barriers, um, they're fairly easy to execute. Uh, because a lot of the infrastructure already exists for you. I'm not creating a new website, literally. I'm just buying an app, you know, for 50 bucks or for free for sometimes, um, and I'm able to execute whatever it is we're trying to do. Um, what I just wanted to show you here is, um, for those of you, here, here's my one thing back to Facebook 101. But, you know, right here on your own page's homepage, you'll see your fan base, you'll see who's talking about you, you'll see your check-ins and et cetera. And then right above it um, are your insights, and you can click on your insights, or you get your weekly emails, or whatever it is. But um, measure, 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 as I'm sure Corian has taught you guys for years now. Um, if you're not measuring, and you don't know what's going on, and you don't know if it really works, then again, you're probably wasting time. Okay? Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I don't see your website in that first little gray box there. Um, our website, well, our website, you mean here? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. These will all, um, it will all link in there. We can definitely get it in there. That's a good point, actually. I never <laughs> noticed that. I don't know if those guys changed it or not. <laughs> uh, how helpful this group is. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. No, and, and I'm open, you know, I, like I said before, I'm a small business owner just like you. I definitely do not have the answers. I'm not a paid consultant. Um, this is all in the trenches, and I can learn just as much from you guys um, as hopefully you'll learn from me. Machen and then Mike, and then we might have to cut out yeah, questions for 15 minutes while you let me talk. Or else we're never gonna get through this. Just real quick, on, and I don't know if you'll have the answer for this, but with Facebook, um, I've had like these spikes of yeah. activity, like, you know, it's running at like 700 and then also like 20,000. Yeah. Wow. When I see that, I'm like, okay, there's something just totally askew, and it kind of, for me, throws out the validity of the numbers. I mean, yeah. have, have you heard of that or experienced that? You, you, you're spiking your Facebook insights or your Google Analytics insights? Um, Facebook. You know, Facebook, I, I do take it with a grain of salt. You know, um, Google Analytics is still my go-to. That's where I'm generally measuring things. Yes, I'm, I'm interested in the number of people talking about me and the engagement that the Facebook insights give you that you cannot get from Google Analytics. Um, as, you know, with regards to the validity of what they're showing you, you know, with Facebook, I'm just a real, I'm not negative, but I'm very skeptical a lot of times about what Facebook's doing. So you might have that skepticism as well. The best thing I would tell you is if you're, depending on where that's happening, yeah. try to insert some links to your website into your posts um, during that given time and see if your traffic okay. is reflective <clears throat> of what Facebook's telling you. That's kind of what we do is if we do see big, big spikes on our Facebook interactions will then go into the <coughs> referrals that Facebook is sending to TylenMountainSports.com and try to see if we can correlate any of those types of results. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's at least a way to um, to reinforce what what you're looking at. Mike, yeah. I, I would say that although some people may disagree, the, the value is as long as sportswear, outdoor equipment links to your website. Right. It's Which more powerful than, than actually than having your website there. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, you know, uh, the, 
there's all sorts of things that always skip your eye, and um, yes, I, I appreciate that, and I'll go back and actually look at that, then, you know, one way or the other, I'll make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be. Better be under the about, though. Yes, it probably is. We link to our website a million times. All of these things are going to link to our website. Um, da, 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 da. Where am I going next? Once I get my slide back up and get my cue. Okay. So let's start with a um, let's start with just sort of the things that you want to think about, and this is kind of what I wanted you guys to take away from here. Here are the things you want to think about most importantly if you're considering moving forward with something like this. These are just a few examples of some of our graphics. One, um, like we just talked about. First of all, is a contest right for you? Do you have a proposition? Um, that you can talk to your audience or are you trying to gain a new audience? If you're trying to gain a new audience, well, how are you going to gain that audience and what's going to make people come to you? You've got to have something, okay? Um, determine your goals as well, whether they're likes, whether they're fans, whether they're leads, whether they're subscriptions. I don't care what they are, but you're not going to be able to craft your contest if you don't have goals to craft that contest around. Okay, so just like anything else we do when we're making decisions in small business, we need to know where we're going at the end of the day before we start with our day. Okay? And then lastly, what are you going to do when your contest ends? Okay? If you do not have capacity to follow up with whatever it is you just executed, do not run a contest. Okay? You must, must, must follow up with whatever it is you're going to do or else you've wasted your time. And you've wasted your new people's time, or your new audience's time, okay? Um, number two, read the rules. As I said, Facebook likes to change them. Um, they're extremely strict. They're extremely um, um, detailed. Uh, things like you must announce your winner, you got to use a Facebook app, um, you, Facebook can't be held liable for absolutely anything, just like the liability release waiver you're going to sign when you rent anything from me, Facebook pretty much wants the same waiver. They are just not responsible for anything. Um, failure to adhere to these um, is not good, um, and they don't really care who you are or how many fans you have. You don't really want to get banned if it's one of your marketing strategies, okay? If Facebook is a big marketing tool for you, um, try not to get banned because then you've now screwed yourself, okay? Three, <laughs> choose a contest, okay? What type of contest is right for you? And this is quite important, okay? We are a, uh, we sell gear, we sell equipment, we also sell experiences that you're going to be able to partake in with that equipment that you buy from us, all right? So have, we have a lot of stories to tell, we have lots of pictures from our audience, we have a lot of really fun stuff that's involved with our business and our industry, okay? If you don't have a lot of really fun, exciting stuff, think about what you do have. Uh, and, and really pay attention to what you do have and try to create a story around whatever it is that you're doing, okay? So um, if you're a real estate agent and you're trying to get leads, maybe you're talking about a dream house or a dream something, you know? And maybe you're like, okay, show me pictures of your dream bathroom. I don't know, I'm just making that up. But, um, you know, there are different ways to think about what, types of things will draw people to your personality or to your page um, as you go through a lot of this. Very simply, um, sweepstakes and uh, giveaways are probably going to be your most popular. They're by far the easiest to execute and they have the lowest barriers to entry and this is very, very, very important in our very limited um, focused world that we live in today. Okay, Capturing somebody's attention and actually having them fill out a form is very difficult, so keep that in mind, right? Everybody just wants to click, they don't want to type, um, especially with all the tablets out there, and that's another thing to seriously consider, okay? Um, the other kind of contest is a much more difficult contest, but the return could be significantly more if executed correctly, and that's a content-based contest, okay? That um, involves user submission of whatever it may be, um, you know, you choose, could be anything. 
Um, again, you get higher quality submissions usually, but the barrier to entry is significantly higher. If you're running a video contest for a GoPro video camera and you need, you know, and you put all these rules like it has to be a minute long and it has to do this and it has to do that, well, guess what? You're just simply not going to get that many entries, well, but the entries that you may get might be pretty cool. Okay, so keep that in mind and then you're going to figure out, well, what's the best for me? Do I want, what do I want? What, what's my goal at the end of the day? All right. Next thing you're going to have to do if you're actually going to move forward with a contest is um, to choose a platform. So an app, okay? Facebook requires you to use an app if you are running an official contest. Um, but taking a quick step back, if you do on your page do something like, hey, the thousand fan is going to win a blah, 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 gift certificate to whatever it is I do, okay? Um, Facebook, depending on the way you use that language, you need to be very careful, okay? You, it's very difficult to say, we're going to pick a winner when we get to a thousand fans, and that winner is going to get X, Okay, so there's a lot of bad words in there. We are going to pick is a bad word for Facebook. They don't want you to be picking, okay? It needs to be one random person will get, okay? So not using the word win, okay? They're, these are very small issues, but they can make a very big difference if anybody was ever to come look at you or touch base with you. So if you want to do those types of things, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, you can give something away to a random lucky person, okay, <laughs> um, at any point on your, in your social media world. That's, that's number one. And you don't need an app to do that. You do want to make sure your language is consistent with Facebook's language guidelines. Um, these are official apps which will help you um, help your, the infrastructure of your contest. They enable you to collect information, they put you into a separate tab on your website, so you get up to nine tabs, I think it is these days, that might change. Um, so this goes into a tab on your website, it has its own standalone link. Some of the good ones also have what we call a microsite or a um, iframe outside of Facebook so that um, if you have a, an audience that isn't necessarily on Facebook, they can still enter the giveaway or the contest. And you can send that to them either through email or any other channel, um, and it's a standalone URL. It's not a facebook.com front slash blah, blah, blah. It's actually, um, you know, if, if you use wildfire, it'll be a wildfire URL address, um, et cetera, and so forth. It's really important to take note of not your entire audience is going to be on Facebook. And, and that is clearly uh, a hindrance in any type of contest or any type of promotion you're going to run on Facebook. So keep that in mind. Okay? Can I ask a question? Can you put it on your website? Break it. Yes, fine. Sorry. Go ahead. Can you put it on your website that you're running a Facebook contest? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yes. And you should. Yeah. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you some examples of that as well. Um, some of the popular ones, I would say Rafflecopter and Wildfire, at least in my opinion, are some of the more popular ones. Uh, I'm going to show you when I get into our case studies about which, um, which ones we've used and had experience with as well. So, oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to speed up. Um, ba -da -ba -da -da. Okay, pick a prize. Um, you, get, you can read this slide for yourself. If you give away an iPad or an Amazon gift card, you're doing yourself a disservice, okay? Um, you're not standing out from the crowd. You're not doing anything differently. These prizes have become a dime a dozen, even though we all want an iPad or an Amazon gift card. It's not speaking to what you do, okay? So be creative, sit down, think long and hard, and make what you're doing pertain to your business or your service, okay? Um, you know, this is the easy way out and your audience will know it, I promise you. If you put together a sweepstakes or a giveaway and all you're doing is giving away an Amazon gift card, I guarantee you your entries will be lower than if you did something genuine, authentic, or true to your own business, okay? But I want one. Well, we all might want one, but that's not what's going to attract anybody's attention. And that's the most important thing. You're trying to attract attention in a really crowded world, in a really crowded space where people have three seconds. You have three seconds, if you're lucky, 
to catch their attention and get them to click over to your entry form. Okay? And an Amazon gift card ain't going to do it. Um, where's that going? Ask for as little info as possible. So I think um, if I haven't beat this to a dead horse the last time I was here, I'm sure you've heard it by now. Any of you who have forms, whether they're on your website or on your Facebook page, and they're more than three fields long, consider minimizing them down to three fields. First name, zip code, email address. Okay? If you want a comments box, fine. Um, if you're that kind of business and you're soliciting um, leads or whatever, fine. But at the end of the day, first name or last, I don't like last name, I like first name personally. If you want last, that's fine. Email and zip code. It allows you to address the person personally after the fact. It gives you a geographic idea of where they are and you get an email address. At the end of the day, that's all I need, okay? If you are, you know, maybe, uh, again, I'm just going back to one, another one of Corian's clients, but you know, if you're a chef or if you're um, a baked goods type of person and Valentine's Day or birthdays or things like that are important to your business and you see serious um, business uplift during those types of things, yes, you might want to consider gender, you might want to consider birthday. There are other fields that are pertinent to other industries. So consider them, but at the end of the day, try to keep your forms to the absolute minimum that you can and this goes for your own websites as well okay keep your forms minimal do not make people fill in 10 boxes or you will lose um, this is a little bit blurry I wish you could see it a little bit better this is what happens um, it's that request for permission so if you guys have ever entered a contest you know you'll click it and you'll fill in something and then it'll say, hey, do you want to share your entire life story with this entire app? Okay, <laughs> has anybody seen that, you know, what I'm talking about, right? And you're like, oh my God, no, don't enter, don't enter. Um, this is a significant barrier to entry and it's something to consider um, wholeheartedly. When you're investigating any of those platforms and you're looking at cost, duration, um, customizations, etc. Make them make them walk you through a very quick screenshot of what their app looks like when this happens. Okay, there are more, uh, there are less invasive ones than others. There are some that do react differently, and there are some that put some different language in there that isn't so scary. Okay, that's important. Um, I know a lot of people drop when this starts to happen, okay? This is a big falling out place. But this is also where trust is built, too. So if you take that information and you use it wisely, people will begin to trust you and they'll get their friends to enter your contest in the future. And I think that's the really fine line that you're balancing here, okay? If you do it well, if you use information wisely, if there aren't 10 random entities emailing out those, cont those contacts that you just gained, you will have further success as you build out your campaigns down the road. Okay, hope that makes sense. And lastly, so you've picked your platform, you've decided what your goals are, you've, you've crafted everything, and now people need to know about it. Okay, um, this is the point that almost everybody um, just doesn't pay attention to for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. You've spent all this time, you've developed prizes, and you've done everything, but then you don't tell anybody, anybody about it, okay? Bad idea. Tell as many freaking people as you can about your contest, okay? And don't be surprised at the ways that your contest will get picked up. Okay, we had some really great results. Most recently, we actually put together a press release, very short, very basic, and gave it to our, our industries. Um, we have like an industry news service, okay, that I can submit as a member of the Outdoor Industry Association, which is a global organization. Um, I can submit my press release, and they have, you know, people look to them for things like that, and then they also project out. Well, because we decided to do that this time, we ended up on all sorts of random places that we never would have imagined we would have ended up on, okay? And what it does is it brings in new audience members, most importantly. So if people don't, aren't thinking about you, it's a great way to think about you. Here's a whole bunch of other ways. I'd say one of the more fun ways in this day and age is to um, 
trade blog posts. So if you have anybody that you're working with from a blogging or content standpoint, this is a great way to get them, hey, will you, how about I write you a post, you post it on your blog, when you do something else down the road, we'll, we'll do some outreach for you. Um, it's a great way, it's free, it doesn't cost you much, um, and you're sort of scratching each other's back and, and getting equal bang for your buck if it's a relevant and um, timely blog or um, partner site, for example. Okay, so seven steps, right? I didn't move too fast, you got your seven steps down. Um, let's put them into action. I'm going to run you through a bunch of examples that we've done. We've been doing this, I don't even know, we've been doing this really since Facebook started. And to Susie's point, we, we very quickly realized when Facebook was getting going and we were getting going as a business, and we decided, oh gosh, we have to be on Facebook. Everybody tells us we have to be on Facebook, but guess what? We've got 500 fans or we've got 1,000 fans and you, you're talking to crickets, right? You're just not talking to enough people to justify having an employee spend a half an hour a day, okay? It's a very touchy balancing situation and while there are significantly more tools to measure your ROI on social networks these days, really, it's really tough. And, and there's a lot of just simple brand recognition and business recognition that is just not quite, just, you can't get it out of Google Analytics. You can't get it out of anywhere other than talking and talking to your customers. How did you come into this store today? Why did you come in my store today? I saw you guys on Facebook, you know, I knew you posted blah, 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 whatever it may be. Um, a lot of you guys, I know you're down the hill here, not much in snow country, but we sell these avalanche airbag packs you might have seen on the news. There have been a lot of rescues with them, right? It's these airbag packs. Every time we sell one, we, um, for fun, the customer, well, we have to do it. The customer gets to try to blow it up in the store. They blow it off and we show them how to repackage it and stuff like that. Because we found ourselves that we were doing that, these are also about $1,000 to $1,500 single unit items, okay? So it's a big sale, and it's a good sale when you get one. You don't get them very often. Um, we started doing that. We started recording everybody that did it just for fun because they liked it, and they wanted to share it with their friends. Well, sure enough, a few weeks down the road, this was this past winter, a customer came in, threw down $1,500 on one of these Avalanche airbag packs, and I'm like, man, I've never seen this guy. I don't know anything about him. I'm like, how did you even know we have these? Why are you here? Oh, well, I've been watching you guys on Facebook for about two years now. And we, I keep seeing you blow these off, and my wife wanted me to get one. Okay? So that wasn't a click-through. It wasn't anything. It was just simply being there and him finally being ready to take the plunge. Now, that happens every day with $5 items up to $1,500 items. But, you, you know... You just can't measure that. If I can measure that, I and mean, we sure do, and we write on our little in-store spreadsheet, you know, Facebook referral, but is there a single post we can attribute that to? Absolutely not. Is there a series of posts? Is there a strategy we can refer that to? Absolutely. It was a succinct strategy to say, we want your friends to know you are now safe in the backcountry. Okay? And it works. And that's proof that it works. So it's very thrilling when you actually can make that connection in the store, because it's very rare. Um, oh, we got Melanie's back. I didn't even know Melanie was going to be here, so um, actually we'll give Melanie a shout-out. This was a bikini shoot we did last year. Melanie's here in the audience. They have recent transplants down to Grass Valley, um, so welcome them. Um, they're awesome folks, um, and they've helped us out a lot in everything that we do. But, um, okay, here, this isn't the first one we did. This is probably the fifth giveaway we did going back to January 2012. Um, I'm gonna fly. Yeah. Um, Content-based giveaway. Tell us what your favorite mountain was. That's it. We didn't really care if it was a ski mountain. You know, yes, this was happening in winter, but we got all sorts of entries, okay? We got, like, Knob Hill in San Francisco. We got um, stuff in South America. We got a little bit of everything. And it, and it was really fun. And that's what's cool about a content-based contest, okay? Um, the app we used was just called Polls for Facebook. It's a simple voting tool, okay? Um, we partnered up, and this is going to be what I'm really going to focus on right here. We partnered up with a, um, a media network called ActionSportsNow.com. It's a website. They are a, 
they're like um, they're like a shopping search engine for action sports um, retailers, basically. So they had a significantly higher fan base than we did at the time. We allowed a six weeks total for the duration, four weeks for submissions, two weeks for voting, and here's your prize package. It's about an $800 prize package, predetermined a men's and women's backpack, men's and women's pair of gloves, uh, helmet cam to go uh, along with all of that, okay? So, what did we see? We saw extremely high engagement during the contest because of the cross promotion. So, you know, people posting on our wall, here's my favorite mountain and why, and that's what you want. That's what you want. You want people posting on your wall and sending in pictures and all of that, okay? So that's one of the benefits of a content-based giveaway is they're all giving you free content. There's nothing better in this day and age than free content. Um, it's the best and free original content that you are allowed to repurpose because it's been part of this app okay and by entering therefore you now get the ability to reuse that content at your desired level okay mm -hmm. they're giving you the content that's what they're signing off on mm -hmm. we had 127 entries which we then narrowed down to 15 finalists and then basically went out for two weeks and made people vote the key to this um, type of contest was basically, um, let's say you submitted, you made it to the finals, you then go out to your entire network and say, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, and in process of voting for me, you also have to have to like Tom Mountain Sports at the same time. Okay, it's very easy. Um, it's very viral because anybody who has a a larger network is going to basically reach out to their entire network and it all takes place in Facebook so there's a lot of sharing and linking and talking and blah 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 blah. Um, with all of that said, um, yes, you have a lot of very behind the scenes control of contests, okay? So you can pick your finalists, it doesn't matter if they were the best or the worst, you want to pick your finalists for the ones who have the most reach and the ones who are most active. Okay, and you want to be very, very smart. You've invested time, energy, and money. Make it the best it can be. Okay, the whole world is not necessarily seeing all 127 entries. They're allowing you to curate those finalists. So keep that in mind. Don't pick your finalists always necessarily based on the best entry. And that's a really important lesson. Okay, um, it's your contest. Do whatever you want with it. <laughs> so, um, at the end of the day, we got 715 new fans. We were not tracking emails at this time for another reason I'm going to go into later. Um, we started this contest, we only had about 2,000 fans at the time. So, 715 was a huge increase for us. Um, great return on investment. Again, now we could really talk to my, my staff and say, okay, you're now earning your keep even more. Now you're talking to more people. Okay, that's what's important for me. One of the downsides is um, that we only learned later on was that Action Sports Now is based out of Georgia. They had a very strong following in the southeast, which is completely opposite of our demographic and our following, and actually turned out to not be the best 715 new fans we could have gotten. Okay, So that's going back January 12th. Okay. So we learned our lesson, Southeast. We didn't want Southeast, so we probably went about 180 degrees from the Southeast and teamed up with Lake Tahoe North, okay? We couldn't have gotten more opposite of what we then did, because Action Sports now was fairly regional, teamed up with Lake Tahoe North. It's our local chamber, okay? It's basically the North Lake Tahoe Chamber of Commerce. At the time, they had 7,000 fans, significantly lower than 23,000 fans. So we knew this going into it, and really the point was we want more targeted, a more targeted audience. We learned our lesson in January, and we said, okay, that was cool. What are we gonna do differently? Well, we want a targeted audience that we can see return on right here, right now in our region, okay? So we made a compromise. We said, okay, the reach of this next contest isn't going to be as big, but hopefully, the return will be more targeted, okay? Um, this was a great idea for us. Now, you can see down here, um, we didn't get nearly as many entries, and we didn't get nearly as many new emails, but wow, the number of people coming into our store saying, I entered, and when are you doing another one, and that was awesome, 
that was immeasurable, okay? It was, it was up here. So now you can start to see some of the factors you're going to be balancing when you're making these decisions as a business, okay? What is it that you want at the end of the day? And the best thing about giveaways is you're not investing thousands of dollars in a consultant to help you. These are very easy. You can turn them around quickly, and you can totally change your scope as often as you want, to be honest. And that's what's kind of interesting about it. Okay? So this was another one. Again, this was a double like. You had to like like Tahoe North. You had to like um, Tahoe Mountain Sports. We, um, I think we used short stack. I, I take that back. We did use short stack on this one, but it was also free. It was part of our chamber membership. They were like, yeah, that sounds great, Dave. Nobody's asked us to do that before. Let's see. <laughs> we'll do it for free. We don't care. Sure. So they not, only, they not only did they do the actual thing for free, they did the creatives for free as well. Okay, so I didn't even have a graphic um, investment in this one, mm. which was big. And you can tell that's not really my graphics. Right? We weren't so thrilled, but it was free. Dave, right? when you say you're hard drink, you're actually getting their, their list. Of Correct. So what happens is um, whenever you have a partner, the, the, the mutual behind the scenes agreement is we share. Okay. So wh whoever the entries, whoever's taking the entries, we all share it, right? So in that case, Lake Tahoe North and Tom Mount Sports, we each got the Excel spreadsheets at the end of the day. It's the same Excel spreadsheet. We all are free to do whatever we choose to do with that spreadsheet and treat it however we want, okay? Um, this gets more important again further down the road. I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna go quickly now, I apologize, they gave me a 10 minute sign. Winter 2013, I would say this is probably our second best, um, <clears throat> second best result we've ever seen and we were actually quite shocked. Um, at the results of this giveaway. We did not expect the results of this giveaway to do what they did. The last two giveaways I just showed you were $800. They were $1,000. They were big ticket items, but they were so targeted, and this is where I'm gonna start to go with this, that maybe not everybody wanted to win those things. Even though we thought they were the coolest things ever, and wow, I want two new ski packs and two new pairs of $200 leather gloves, but that might not have resonated with really anybody else outside of a very core Tahoe ski type of audience, okay? So we took it down a notch and we said, here, here's a pair of Smith ski goggles. Any, you know, anybody who skis, anybody who does anything can have a pair of Smith goggles. It doesn't matter. You don't need a backpack and you don't need a pair of $200 gloves if you go skiing <laughs> once a year, right? $175 value, okay? Um, item number two, pair of poles, $80 value, okay? Look at these results. Wow. Okay? This was a two-week contest in the middle of January. It cost us $49 to host this on Wildfire, which in my opinion is one of the best contest apps out there. It's mm -hmm. affordable and it's easy, okay? Anybody can use Wildfire, I swear. Um, this was incredible results for a two-week contest, and we really dove into these results, and we looked at what was going on, and at the end of the day, what we kind of came up with was this little tiny graphic right here, okay? This graphic right here is what we determined drove this contest, okay? This is the graphic that shows up every single time it's shared or liked or something else, all right? And now this is great, and these are great, and they're big and beautiful, and they tell you the story. But this is a very tiny call to action that has some cool colors and that is clean, okay? Um, this is important. So when you're going in and you're building out your apps and it tells you where everything's gonna go, pay attention, okay? Because there's some very tiny things which you might not think are gonna make all the difference. We believe this little guy made the difference because of the way it got shared and spread out once people entered, okay? The second thing is both Smith and Black Diamond were my brand partners on this. Um, all of this product and all of these giveaways was provided to Tom Mountain Sports for no cost as part of a co-op advertising program. So I don't know in your industries or franchises or whatever, um, you have suppliers who allow for advertising budgets and stuff like that. This is a great use of those advertising budgets. And in my industry, they would much rather give me product than give me cash. 
Um, you know, they're like, oh, cash, we don't want to give you cash here. Have some more product. They got buckets of product back in the store. Um, and that's what we use for all of these. Okay? How was the word of mouth? Word of mouth was really good. Um, you know, it, it really, this was just such a simple contest, and it had a larger, uh, you know, again, being a very generic single pair of goggles. It wasn't men's. It wasn't women's. It wasn't pink. It wasn't black. It was just a pair of goggles. It's simple. Mm -hmm. That was successful. Simplicity is significantly more successful than this big elaborate thing. Okay? Okay, Instagram. Two seconds. We were late to the Instagram game. We jumped on board. We were like, oh my gosh, we're totally lame. We have no followers. We have nothing going on. Let's do a contest. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> it's worked on everywhere else. Let's try it again. Instagram contest, really hard. Um, or at least a little bit harder. Um, because that it, it's harder to communicate a, t a message on Instagram. Um, so your graphics have to be good. And it has to be simple. So this contest was hosted on Facebook, even though it was an Instagram contest. Okay? All you had to do was hashtag Tahoe Mountain Sports. We used a company called TabSite. They also have a free trial. Um, if you can fit your contest into four days, you can get away with doing it for free. Um, if you want to do it longer, it was like 20 bucks a month. It was pretty, pretty darn cheap. Um, <clears throat> Very high engagement, you know, this was, you know, we went from zero to 75, so we, we had no measurables. Really our goal with this contest was we just want more followers. We just want an audience on Instagram is really what we wanted. This took place in Feb of 13. We jumped there. Now we're at double this fan base a lot more naturally and because we're a little bit more active on Instagram. Instagram's super fun. I'm all about it. Screw Facebook. I'm moving to Instagram, by the way. <laughs> Um, but we had 32 photos entered, and you know, here's some of those photos. So guess what you get to do with all of this fun stuff you collect on Instagram? You use it. This is like three weeks worth of content that we did nothing for. Hey, check out our picture from the guy who entered our Instagram contest last week. 20 likes automatically. Piece of cake. Right? It's just a pretty picture. Everybody likes that. Okay? So keep those ancillary benefits in mind. Last one. This one just wrapped up. Spring 2013. We just finished it. Um, this was a three-way um, collaboration. Active Junkie, which was a, is a media content-based site in my industry, myself, and then, um, who do we do this with? Nemo. Nemo is a sleeping bag tent um, brand from the East Coast. Very niche very small, very high-end. Um, again, cost was zero, mostly because Active Junkie here they do this stuff, and so they just want content. And so when I came to them and said, hey, I got this great contest, you guys want to host it? Sure, we'll host it, no problem. It gives them a reason to talk about something. So they absorb the cost. So you okay? were their free content. <clears throat> we were their free content for once. How refreshing is that, right? <laughs> you're never free content, you're like, oh, thank you. You know, mm -hmm. so not only zero cost to me, again, they did all the graphics because this actually lived on their Facebook page and their site, even though we also marketed it. We did put this on our home page, and this is one of those rare cases where, yes, as an e-commerce retailer, we were sending people to another place. <clears throat> we were okay with that because we hopefully were getting them back at some point down the road. This one was really different. Um, what we did here was... We, we called it this, so it wasn't just a gear giveaway. We gave it a purpose. This was a girlfriend gear giveaway, right? This was the ultimate package for your girlfriend or your wife or whatever. By categorizing it like that, wow. We got picked up all sorts of places, mommy blogs, all sorts of other random women-specific blogs. So in all of these different ways, just by changing the, a little bit of the architecture around the contest and a little bit of the branding of it, boom, it got picked up really widely. This is like a forum where some guy posted, um, oh, I had some text there, it went away, but I think this guy got about 30 responses. So he posted this thread, active junkie girlfriend gear giveaway, go here to enter, okay? He got about 25 responses on this random forum in Canada um, everybody just saying, thanks, enter. That's all they said, because that's all they cared about. He gave them valuable information, 
okay? So, um, you know, going back to SEO, going back to all these other things, this was great. Inbound links. Secondly, um, email. Sent it out via email. Social-based emails are significantly higher click-through rates than your normal whatever, service-based emails. Keep that in mind. People will click on an email to enter something much more quickly than they will click on an email to check out what's on sale or what special deal you have in the grand room this weekend or whatever. Okay. Um, Nemo, they were the lowest. They got 1,200 fans. We got 959 fans, and this was the crazy one. We actually got more new email addresses than fans. Okay. The next one, this is going to start, if it hasn't started today, it's going to start tomorrow. Um, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be one where we're going to let the winner choose. So we're giving you eight packs to choose from. I, we have a feeling we might have finally figured this out after all these giveaways, okay? By getting the winner, they can choose what they want. Shocking, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to see how this does. Even though this is a lower dollar value, we think it's going to be the most successful because it will have the greatest um, ability to impact a single person. You know, you want something different than you want, et cetera, and so forth. So this is going to be interesting. I'll be happy to report back once we're done. We are partnering with Active Junkie again as part of a longer term um, content thing that we're doing with them. Okay. Lastly, and I'm going to finish up in two seconds, I swear, measurable ROI. This is the most important thing you can do, and Corian alluded to it a lot earlier on. So we made a big investment in email marketing. We signed up with a company called Bronto. It's not free and it's not cheap, but oh my gosh, is it powerful. And so one of the first things we did was we installed what's called a welcome series. So I encourage any of you who want to check it out and what we're doing. This is one of about 13 email marketing series we have now built out. Okay, a welcome series is very simply when somebody signs up for your email address over the course of X amount of days, you serve them up X amount of messages with a very fine end. And whether that's a deal or a special or a gift or whatever it is, we do a 20% off coupon. So you have 30 days to use your 20% off coupon and you're going to get about 7 emails from us over that course of, of, set of 30 days. The first email isn't going to tell you how going to have a coupon. It's a big picture of my staff and I in the front of our store saying, hello. And it says, here's our YouTube channel. Here's our Facebook channel. Here's our Twitter handle. Here's, here's who we are. Okay? We're not selling you anything. You're not actually going to get a sales pitch until your third email. Okay? And that's going to come about five to seven days after you sign up. Okay? Um, this is growing. You, you can see the numbers. I'm not afraid. I, you know, I think when I always sit in these presentations, I want to see numbers. What does this really mean? This is just an email series. So we, at, we installed this in October of 2011. We had four transactions. 2012, this was the whole year. We're still sort of tweaking it and making it work. Boom. Now we're into 2013. And this is just the first six months of 2013, okay? This is, this is our fastest growing number. It's one of our best performing email chains, okay? This is a, it wasn't originally a set it and forget it, but it now is. We have not touched a single one of these emails since probably November of 2012, okay? So this is one of those things that you set up, it's recurring sales, and it's hopefully gonna pay off, even though it was a big front end investment. Okay. Is that revenue on a product, or I'm not clear on... This is just, is. Um, it, this is kind of total revenue, though. This is not margin. This is not anything else. It's just a number, okay? So this is just a sales number of people who have directly come from one of those emails in the welcome series directly to TahoeMountainSports.com. This does not include store sales, which okay. is probably double that amount, actually. Um, this is very simply a number from Google Analytics from that specific so campaign. That email series. For and what's that the name email of, the, uh, of the product you're using? Bronto. How do you spell that? B R O N T O. Thanks. So, lessons learned. Partners are important, pick them wisely. Um, baseline metrics, extremely important. Um, have fun with different types of prize packages. That's um, probably been one of our biggest testing cases. 
Uh, follow the rules, announce your winners. Okay, so once your contest ends, you still have like five posts in you, right? You got to announce your winner. You got to, okay, the prize package is on the way. Here it is. We're boxing it up and sending it out. Okay, make them send you a picture when they get it back. Here's our winner, la, la, la. Here's six months down the road. Here's what our winner did with her prize package. <laughs> All of that stuff. It's great content, okay? Um, and clear calls to action, okay? If your calls to action aren't good, you're not doing it. Um, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> First, I want to ask the group, because we do have a sponsor to bring up and talk to. Is everybody going an extra, good for going an extra 10 minutes today? Uh, instead of wrapping up at 12.30, we'll go to 12.40. Uh, I want to have some chance for questions and answers. So what I'm thinking is let's do five minutes of questions and answers, because I saw the hands going up right away. And uh, from there, we'll bring Nation on and uh, do our closing. And I'll stick around afterward, and, and I'm happy to answer any yeah. questions. And you can, my cards are behind Rachel over there. And you can grab a card. You can email me. You can talk to me. You can do whatever you want. And by the way, was that amazing <laughs> or what? <laughs> I think more of those than this I think Other people out there, let will ask the same question again. How many do you think it's feasible that you're now planning a contest within the next year for your business? Come on, really? <laughs> it's really easy. Um, you know, this is a lot of information to digest, but don't be overwhelmed. Um, the tools are out there. Wildfire, they'll walk you right through it. You, sir, and then um, and then you, and yeah. Why don't you run multiple contests at a time? Because that's a waste of time. Because if we're running multiple contests at the same time, we're diluting our messaging. Um, so even if you have different partners? Even if I have different partners. So for us, content is king. And I know, I, I believe you guys have, a lot, have had a number of conversations on content. So really, content is the new SEO. You know, I'm not paying people like Corian to go do keyword research for me anymore. I'm paying people like Corian to write really good articles for me. That's what I would prefer. Keyword research is still really, really, really important, but if I can write a really good article or have a really good singular message that I can play with for two to four to six weeks, I'd rather have that message to go on because that's what's getting me out there in the world and that's what's creating people linking to my site and, and bringing me traffic at the end of the day. So if I have more than one contest or more than one of these things going on, I'm confused. And I'm confusing you. Which one do I enter? Where do I go? I'm pointing in too many directions. And I'm sort of wasting my own capacity because it's spreading us out. It's diluting us. Whereas I want to be, I want to be as absolutely focused as I can. And I want to be doing the best job for myself and my partner so that we're all seeing the highest return. And I, it's funny. I have a competitor, local competitor right now, who's running four contests simultaneously. And... I'm just shocked. I'm like, are you crazy? So he's like going through, so all this product that we get is same industry, right? I know what he gets. It's the same thing that I get. I'm like, dude, you're going to be out of stuff. You know, I'm like, what are you going to do next month? You know, whereas I'm, I'm already rolling into my next one, right? I'm rolling into my daughter backpack one. After my daughter backpack one, I already have a tent and a sleeping bag set up for the next one. So we're kind of scheduled out right now through like November. You got lots of chances to win. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The other thing about content too is you're you're providing really valuable information. You're coming across as a consultant. You're helping people, and I think that's why content is just as, or if not more powerful than keyword research, even though it's still important. Content is just, you know, it's just really helpful. It, it, it's so e-commerce e is crazy. I mean, it, it it's the world changes, and what's going on on the internet is, as a lot of you know. Man, I, five years ago when you and I first met, things were slower. It was right. it was it was yeah. mellower. <laughs> now it's just like, oh my gosh, how in the world do we do all of this? Okay, so, so my question is, I I'm not clear on or walk me through your whole partnership. Like, can you do a quick role play? Like, you go yep. to the chamber of commerce and want to partner with you. Yep. How does that work? Give me that workflow. I'm just um, trying to really break that's, my brain that's down. Having some con that's having the contact. It's, having the, it's knowing who to talk to and saying, hey, here's an idea I have. Would you guys be interested in this? Okay, so it's the same target audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. so what benefit is? I, I understand. They have a benefit because, A, 
they don't have much, you know, the, here's, the, here's the story at the end of the day. Everybody wants content. So if you can go to somebody and say, I got your content, I need you to be my host, it's a win-win for both of us, right? That's what, so Active Junkie, he doesn't have inventory, he's not selling anything, he wants traffic, he wants people to go to his site and read his articles. Well, how are you going to get people to your site to read your articles well, if you sign them up for Facebook and every time you write a new article on, and on Facebook you're saying, hey, here's my new article, and through email you're saying, hey, here's my new article, or whatever, well, people are going to click on so that. So find something they need, yeah. and then you have something yep. that they need, yep. and same target audience, yep. work something out, and promote from there. And yep. you're driving traffic on those campaigns. Yep. You're, people are having, they're signing up for their, liking their page and your page. Correct. So you're making your target audience do extra work by liking two pages, right? Yeah, but that's a click. So when I talk about extra work, clicking isn't extra work in this day and age. Typing is okay. extra work. That's the difference. Okay. Clicking, anybody, you can okay, click Okay, so I'm going to go want. click your page, click your page. <laughs> okay. Brenda, I want to, we're and running out of time. And it's all within so. the same tab. Okay. That's so what they're I not traveling around Facebook. Got okay. It. I guess I didn't show a good screenshot, right. but. On one screen, I got you, you're next, don't worry. Okay. Um, <laughs> on the same tab, it's just like, it. like okay. they emails that go All right, that submit. makes much more sense. Yeah, you're not right. traveling around Facebook, it's not a scavenger hunt. Thank you. Uh, so. Yes, sir, please. Will you give us an illustration, an example of good content and bad content? Ooh, good content and bad. Bad content is stolen or duplicated content that somebody else wrote that you think, oh, that was good, I'm going to copy it and put it on my website. That's bad. <laughs> good content is anything original that you can write or you have somebody write for you that is pertinent to what the purpose of your um, web property is trying to do. With a keyword in it. Okay, With a keyword in it. One more question. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, I've been deterred by that um, app that comes up when I Absolutely. click on something and it goes, oh, would you want to give permission for all this? And I go, forget this, I'm getting out of here. And so I'm just wondering, why can't you, on your Facebook page, um, have them on your contrast uh, click in to your website? And then you have complete control versus having it all in the Facebook where you have this app module. You uh, not allowed. Oh. See, everybody wants That's traffic, okay? So traffic is the goal. So here's what Facebook gets out of all this junk. They get traffic. Uh, here's what we all lose. Traffic. Uh, here's what we all hope to gain back after said contest is finished. Traffic. Um, so it's really a double-edged sword. Um, yes, the demographics there are, are so unbelievably apparent. And, and this is just, you know, not to offend absolutely anybody in this room, the older you are, the more you're not going to click OK. The younger you are, they don't even care. They click OK on everything. Um, you know, would I rather have a customer like you? Absolutely. You have more money, you have more spending power, you know what you want, you're not fickle. So you really, that's a very fine line that you have to balance, and that's why um, one thing we always do when we're trying out all these new stupid platforms and the next guy that comes up and offers you a free trial and blah, 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 make them show you what their permissions um, yes. intermediary screen looks like. Okay. Uh, I think that's an important one because there are scarier ones out there. There's some very easy ones that just say, are you okay with sharing your basic information, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's just an okay, and there aren't like four asterisks, and <laughs> you know, you're gonna get sold to so and so. <laughs> so, I, you know, just, just you're not love. At the crossroads. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, thanks everyone. Thanks for all the questions. We want to bring Mason up here. Dave, I'll thank stick you around. so much. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Thanks for having me. Before Machin comes up, if you haven't put your card in for the drawing, pass it over to What's the end. Well, Machin's going to tell us what the prize is. Oh, we got another prize. It's a good prize. Okay, so, so here's the prize. Um, there's a new store downtown called Olive Vitality, and they have, they carry olive oils, balsamic vinegars, and it's really an amazing experience. I mean, who would think that like olive oil and vinegar is like 
cool. But you go into this place, and on the left side of the whole wall is all olive oils that you can taste, and there's all kinds of infused flavors, and then the same with the vinegar. And so the drawing today is going to be you get a bottle of oil and a bottle of vinegar of your choice. The only thing is you have to go in the store to redeem it, right? And so I'll have a card for you to go in there and get it. Um, tons of health benefits to olive oil. Um, the proprietors of the store are amazing with regards to their knowledge of the product, and it's a wonderful experience. So if you have some time, go in there, and if you win, you're going to get the free Where bottle. Where is it located? It's 126 Mill Street. Oh, Mill Street. So what's your favorite blend? You have to explain there's blends. Yeah, there are blends. And, and actually, one of the things that you can do is you can have them actually create pairings for you, where you'll take this olive oil and this vinegar, and they'll fix a bottle for you. Um, one of our favorites, actually, it's just a blood orange infused um, oil. And... Um, there's uh, coconut. Uh, coconut lime. Yes. Persian coconut lime. That's so my favorite. Been, uh, <laughs> that is my So, yeah. so just you know, take a little time, do the tastings. It's awesome. Now, here's what I want to promote. Um, the Center for the Arts is having an event. Mark your calendars. August 23rd. It's called Dancing with Our Stars. Right. It's off the. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's based on the popular TV show, Dancing with the Stars. They have ten professionals from the area. Uh, when I say professionals, I mean business professionals. <laughs> okay. um, I'm one of those people, so they call us stars. And our job is to raise funds for the Center of the Arts so that we can continue to bring in the great shows that they do, and also to build a, um, a disability ramp for access to, to the stage, the main stage, yeah. So that's what this is really a fundraiser for. And it's just a blast. And you can actually attend the event. Tickets are on sale now. I encourage you to go there. Uh, the more fans I have in the audience, the better. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's also, like I say, it's a fundraiser. So with that being said, what I'm reaching out to you folks to is if you feel compelled to donate five, ten, a hundred dollars, whatever you feel works for you, um, you can go to my site, I'm going to give you the email in, in a moment, or just go straight to the Center of the Arts and find it, it's pretty easy to find. We can also put it on, you can put it on Facebook, our Facebook page. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, so look for it there, look, start looking for it, it's going to be looking for you, <laughs> trust me. And again, anything you can contribute would be great, 100% of it goes to the Center of the Arts, and I'm just the conduit to reach into your pocketbook and help the Center of the Arts and you get to watch and laugh at me dance. Which I am rehearsing for, so I'm learning we the waltz laugh. and the We're swing, excited. and it's going to be fun. So. Great. All right. With that in mind, would you like to pull yeah. the magic card? So this is so the winner of the oil. Person. and uh, Oh, you guys will love Olive Vitality. Honest to God, it is the best thing. Janet Ann Collins. All right. Yeah. Good. Good, good. So I will give you a card. Just bring the card in and show. The owners are Matt and Jeanette Angel. Just Okay. And, and if you haven't um, been so kind to donate, um, we do thank you for it. And if you want to be a sponsor, raise your hand. Come on, let's see sponsors. <laughs> we'll, okay, do we have a sponsor next month? Not yet. We well, will. we will because somebody will jump up and say we'll sponsor. So thank you. <laughs> we'll leave this here. And, um, you and also a thanks to Doug Hooper for taking yeah, the photographs. Yeah. You'll be able to see them. So, closing announcements, uh, next month our speaker is Lisa Montanero, I'll have the information on that posted soon. She is a very well-traveled professional speaker who has moved to the West Coast and she'll be talking about business organization. I talked to Dave and because we had so much interest here, he's willing to hang around our Facebook group. So what that means is if you have questions as you're thinking about this, and I'd love you guys to reply to this, please post your questions for the next few weeks. and. They will be kind enough to answer those and keep the conversation nice. going. Try to tag uh, me if you can, so I notice it. Yeah, I do Dave Paul. Yeah. Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure that we've got <laughs> links to the Mountain Sports there as well. And I mentioned the webinar for doing wireframings and storyboarders boarding as web design. Please talk to me or talk to Rachel and give me your name and email address, and I'll send something out and get that set up. Thank you everybody for coming and hang out for as long as you want to network and talk. And